Hi, and welcome to another episode of Patrick's Tech Lightning. It has been a very different start of 2022 with certain events happening around the world. However, I will arm you with these five tips for 2022 that can be useful for an Azure architect. So let's dive into it. The first tip is about network security groups, NSGs. As you know, NSGs, they're actually a core component of Azure security fabric. You specify the allowed network flows with source and destination addresses, along with protocol, which either allow or deny the traffic. In general, you can assign these either to a subnet or a NIC, which belongs to a virtual machine. Now, here's the trap that many fall into. If you assign an NSG to a subnet, it's not actually a device that sits in the subnet allowing or denying traffic in and out. In Azure, there's a hypervisor, host, where your different virtual machines are running. On this hypervisor, there's a virtual switch with a virtual filtering platform. This virtual filtering platform is where the NSGs are enforced. So it doesn't matter if you apply NSG to a subnet or a NIC belonging to the VM itself, they're actually enforced in this virtual filtering platform. So that means that NSGs applied to a subnet can also filter traffic between virtual machines which are in the same subnet. Microsoft, they recommend it to only apply NSGs to either subnet or NIC level, not on both simultaneously, as it will make management cumbersome. NSGs, as it stands today, they do not support filtering of private endpoints. This feature is, however, in public preview, which, if you enable it, allows you to test it out already now. That was awesome information on the NSGs. We're now moving on to tip number two, and it's about subnets. You cannot just have one big subnet in a VNet and deploy all your services into one. Certain services impose restrictions on the subnet they are deployed in, limiting the application or policies, routes, or combining VM and service resources within the same subnet. Microsoft, they recommend to check with each service on the specific restrictions as they may change over time. Example of such services are Azure NetApp files, dedicated HSMs, Azure Container Instances, and App Service. On the web page linked in the description, you have a list of the services. This table here shows the services that can be deployed into a virtual network. On the right hand side, you see if they require a dedicated subnet, yes or no. In general, we can say that the compute services of Azure do not require a dedicated subnet. It is however recommended for Azure Batch, as indicated by the two in that column. The network components are all except for network virtual appliances required to have their own subnet. So as you can see, the list is quite important as many services do require a dedicated subnet. We are now moving on to tip number three, which is about costing virtual machines in Azure. For this tip, uh, we will jump right into the Azure calculator. As you can see, it's quite easy to add and calculate the basic cost of a virtual machine. Just by adding the component to the calculator, we get a fairly standard configuration and the cost to go along with it. Among all the selections, we can select region, operating system, and of course, one of the most important selection is the size, or as we take it, we like to call it t-shirt size. What about disks? Under manage disks, we only get one option to pick one disk. Now, this is the OS disks that you can specify here. But what about additional disks? How do we cost them? Well, we had to add an extra item to the pricing calculator called storage accounts. If we look at the storage account, it's important to select the correct region. Then we select the type and here we have to find something called manage disks. Now we can select the size itself, how many of these disks we want and a couple of other options. The point is, to get the pricing of extra disks in Azure, you have to cost them separately with a storage account as I've shown you right here. This brings us to tip number four. And this is about application gateways. 
Now, there's always a constant discussion if you should put an application gateway in a shared services hub or put it in the spoke together with the application. On a high level, there's no right or wrong answer for this. It all depends on your security setup and requirements. However, what you do need to know is that each application gateway only supports one public IP address. Now, this is something that you need to keep in mind if you decide to put this application gateway in the hub for the shared services. It may not be sufficient with just one application gateway if your application requires several public IP addresses. Which brings us to tip number five, and this is the last one. This one is for the Azure Bastion service. We all know that we can use Azure Bastion in a central shared services hub. This can then be used for all the subscriptions which are paired to this central VNet. A shared Azure Bastion service like this is very common when the Azure landing zone allows it. You can save cost and simplify the infrastructure in this way with the hub and spoke model. Now, there's one big caveat to mention with this. You cannot use the pairing or V1 association when you're going through an Azure V1. So pay extra attention to this when you're designing an Azure Bastion with the hub and spoke where you have deployed an Azure V1. Let's summarize our learning experience very briefly. Network security groups, NSGs assigned to a subnet will also protect traffic within that subnet. NSGs do not have support for private endpoints. This feature is currently in preview. Many Azure services require a dedicated subnet. Always verify this prior to design and deployment. To cost additional data disk for a VM, you have to do this with a storage account in the Azure pricing calculator. Application gateways can only have one public IP address and Azure Bastion does not support pairing through a V1 hub and spoke model. Those are my tips for keeping an eye on the Azure technology in 2022. They may seem like very basic, but even seasoned architects at times sometimes get them wrong. So I hope they were useful and until next time, take care and see you.